Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can measure the inductance using an oscilloscope and a function generator. Or if you don't have an oscilloscope but you do have a function generator or, you know, just for that matter, a sine wave generator um, and a couple multimeters, I'll you really can use one meter it's just a lot easier a lot faster with two multimeters but if you have two multimeters and a signal generator you can measure the inductance here uh, using this method I'm going to show you there's I'm sure there's you know several other ways I can think of at least one other right now but I'm going to show you these two methods okay one using two multimeters and a signal generator one using the oscilloscope and a signal generator so that way you don't need to use a LCR meter if you don't have one. Now, by the way, this little B-side e, uh, what is it? ESR02 Pro. There's some, you know, there's various uh, products like this one. I've reviewed this guy, but these are inexpensive um, and they're really cool. It does have a signal generator in it that you can do uh, frequencies, so you can use this guy with a multimeter or two multimeters and you can measure the inductance okay now in previous videos we did these RC filters where we either did a high pass or low pass filter and I use this guy to sweep the frequency in and plot this nice curve well you can do it manually you know plotting several uh, points on a curve using this technique now it's really easy and really quick to find a 3 dB point the roll off and that's how you find the inductance of your inductor and it's also how you can find the uh, 3db point okay we'll also need a resistor a known resistance value non-inductive i'm going to start off using this 8 ohm because i want to see how non-inductive this guy is i've, I've uh, used this in other videos but i'm going to use it again in this one and we're going to try that all right so let's measure the inductance of this guy well, actually, I have a smaller one here on the bench. It's much like this, but a little bit smaller. Let's bring the uh, camera over, and I'll show you the setup, and then we'll show you on the, uh, how, how to do this uh, 3 dB point really quickly, okay? All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Okay, guys, so here's the setup. I've got an 8-ohm resistor here in series with this inductor. Okay, I've got the function generator. It's right here. just popped off the lead. So this function generator right here is tied across the series combination. The two white wires are coming from the resistor. So all these leads, all the returns, the generator, uh, there's two scope probes, and there's a multimeter. See this gray lead here from this multimeter? It's tied here, and the other side of it, the red one, is tied to the other white wire. So it's reading the voltage across this one. This one's going to read the voltage across inductor. It's this red and black wire. It's this connector and this connector so it's reading the voltage across the inductor now I also have an oscilloscope probe which we'll see later and uh, the channel 1 is tied from the resistor returns here to the generator so we're seeing the generator input and then uh, channel 2 is looking at the center position between uh, so essentially it's looking across the resistor okay so all right Okay, so now what we're going to do is these multimeters are set to read AC voltage in millivolts. Right now we're seeing 196.5 here, and this frequency is 1 kilohertz. Here, I'll just come in a little closer. Okay, and then this guy's 60.7. So what we want to do is increase the frequency where we know the inductor is X of L, reactance of X of L is equal to 2 pi FL. As frequency goes up, X of L goes up. So uh, it's a choke, right? It chokes off frequency. So what we'll see is the voltage climb here as we increase the frequency. And what we want to see is when the voltage across the inductor equals the voltage across the resistor. Then we'll know this is X of L is equal to 8 ohms. Okay, so I'm at 1K. 2k you can see that change and this just jumped up to 118 3k it jumped up 174 4k well we went over 230 so what we have to do is go down to 3k 
move a digit over and go up again. Okay, try to climb up on top. Oh, went over again. Okay, let me go down another decimal spot. I'll try to get 194.4 if I can. Okay, I have to move over another decimal place. I'm using the Siglent SDG 810 generator. Okay. All right. Well, it's pretty darn close. Okay, we have 194.4, 194.43, I guess. So that frequency is 3.345 uh, kilohertz. Okay, so let's see uh, how close we got to that. It, X of L is equal to 2 pi FL. Okay, so X of L is 8 ohms. So we put in 8 ohms. That's equal to 2 pi FL. So we'll, so we'll divide all that stuff out and leave L by itself. So 2 divide, pi divide, and, L, or, and F is 3345. 3345 divide. Okay, that's 380 microhenries, if you can see that. All right, now, if I read on the side, it says it's point th or 390 microhenries, 0.39 millihenries. So, you know, that's what it was rated for, but I'm, I would be inclined to believe this right now, but let's uh, measure it on the scope, and then we'll measure on the LCR meter. All right, guys, so I started doing this measurement. I noticed that the uh, phase shift wasn't what I was expecting. So I switched the resistor and the inductor position, and I dialed up the frequency to 3333, where the meters uh, equalized, and the phase shift is still off a little bit. So I think what the deal is, is my 8 ohm resistor is not exactly 8 ohms at 3.3K. Uh, Plus I think it also has some inductance in it. So it's not uh, as purely non-inductive as I uh, would have wanted. But anyway, let's just continue with this. Let me show you. Now one way, if, you're, if your scope will do a measurement where you can set up, if you can add a measurement like phase, between your channels that's one way to do it but if you can't then what you can do is you can just kind of eyeball it or use your cursors okay okay so what we want to do is we want to spread the frequency out so it's easier to see but the first thing we want to know is how much time there is in a cycle at this point okay now we know it's 333 so we can calculate that we can also just measure it with the cursors okay so if we bring up our cursors we can bring this one to there and bring it to full cycle over here and what we see is we have 300 we have 300 microseconds in a cycle okay okay so what we want to do is once we know we have 300 microseconds in a cycle we know a cycle is 360 degrees so we divide 360 degrees by our our time okay that tells us how many degrees we have per microsecond. And then what we do is we find out how many microseconds we have delay between these between these cursors. So like I say, we can spread it out and make it a little bit easier to see that. So I put one here and one here. Okay. And then it's just the time, you know, I could sit here and try to really perfect that or even spread it out a little bit but we say 34.5 microseconds all right all right guys so let's do the math on this we're going to just say we have 360 degrees okay and we're going to divide that by 300 microseconds per degree so just 300 so that's 1.2 degrees per microsecond and then we multiply that by 34.5 microseconds so just 34.5 and that's 41.4 degrees so and we see this it's measuring about 41.4 
Now it's giving a minus sign because it's got uh, the yellow is to the right of the blue. So yellow was the input voltage, 274, and the blue is the voltage across the inductor, 182 millivolts. And it's negative because the inductor is lagging behind the, um, the input voltage, which is what we expect. It's Eli the Iceman, right? So for an inductor, it's Eli, right? Voltage is ahead of the current. So the voltage is here, and the current is in phase with this guy but it's supposed to be about 45 degrees shift when the voltage is equal to x of l okay and that's the 3 db point so we're off a little bit and i think that's because of the inductance in the resistor okay guys what i did is i uh, put a metal film 20 ohm resistor in place of the 8 ohm uh, not so non-inductive resistor and so right now we're out of balance we're at 64 degrees and my meters down here i'll just read them to you since you can't see them one's at 400 and one's at 163 so i'm going to increase the frequency here till i see them balance whoops kind of went over <laughs> okay three okay whoa okay there we go three 386.8 millivolts off the resistor and off the inductor so you can see it's 45 degrees is what I was expecting. So that, uh, when they're equal, that's where we plot the 45 degrees on the phase shift. And that's where we get our 3 dB point. So now, if I calculate the inductance based on this frequency, let's see what we get. All right, so let's do the math on this. Um, we have 20 ohms resistance. That's our X of L is e equal to that. So x value is equal to 20 ohms. Divide 2 pi f out of that. 2 divide. Pi divide. And f is 8343. And we get the 381 micro. So pretty darn close to what we got before. So that's actually pretty darn close. Um, but we are getting the 45 degree phase shift. I mean, it's ever so slightly different. Well, and that's a good example of why you need good, reliable reference. Uh, I was thinking my 8 ohm non inductive resistor would be okay in that frequency band, but, and it's actually not too bad, but a couple of degrees difference on the 20 ohm resistor gave us closer to the 45 degrees, which, you know, I guess, I guess it's just a slight difference, but, uh, you know, there you go. Okay, here's the 8 ohm 200 watt resistor that's it's plugged in right here in the plus minus terminals. And this auto meter will come up with the measurement, I think. 7.968 ohms at 1 kilohertz. And let's look at the inductance here. 19.1. Okay, let's go to 10K. 19.16 gone up slightly and let's see what the resistance is 8 ohms okay let's go to 100k just for fun I was doing 1 to 10k because that's kind of the frequency band we were on in the scope but now look it's gone up to 10.25 ohms so that's kind of interesting that it's saying resistance has gone up with frequency okay let's look at the inductance Seventeen point, uh, you know, five five. So the inductance has gone up a little bit, and I think that accounts for the resistance. I think this thing, this meter, I don't know. That's interesting that it's it's uh, changing resistance with uh, frequency. Let's put the inductor on there. Now the inductor here. Let me show you a close up of this guy. Okay, so that's. Okay, so that's kind of what it shows is 0.39 millihenries and 0.23 ohms DC resistance. Okay, let's put the meter and find out. Okay, so let's put this in here. Let's try to get these flat terminals in here. Let go of the thing. All right, so at 100K, it's uh, 370 microhenries, 0.37 millihenries. 
and let's look at the resistance uh, 3.9 ohms so that's kind of high it's a bit higher than what they're calling out but usually they rate these at 1k so let's drop down to one there's a hundred let's go to 1k Okay, 0.283, so that's pretty close to what it's rating. And let's see the uh, ductance. It's kind of searching. Oh, and look, yeah, so this is, so you can kind of tell they, they uh, marked this at a one kilohertz rating. Okay, let's go to 10K. And it's dropped off a little bit, 0.375. That's pretty close to what we were measuring on the scope, I think. Uh, I think our frequency was kind of close to that, too. So, and let's go to resistance. 0.714. So, okay, so that's, that's from this LCR meter. All right, guys, so you can see how when we use two multimeters, and we put a signal into a RL circuit so that's like a voltage divider and when the voltage is equal you have an equal drop on each one of those two components that's the 3 dB point that's your half power point okay and that's when your phase is 45 degrees so the voltage the the waveforms are 45 degrees offset, so the peaks don't happen at the same time. And that's why you can get 0.707 on your voltage when you think, well, if it's half power, how come I don't get half voltage and half voltage? You know, you get 0.707. So anyway, um, we saw how you could do it real quickly on your multimeters, and then how we could use the scope to check the phase alignment or if you have kind of a cool measurement that measures phase, which not all scopes do that either. Uh, you know, this scope has a lot of cool stuff. I'm gonna do a full review on this scope um, now that I've had some time with it and show you all the cool stuff. All right, guys, and I'm, I've got a link down below where I show how to do the impedance graphing and the, uh, some of the other videos, the RC low pass and high pass filter or filter examples I'll link them below okay so you can see those and compare it to this kind of manual method of doing it all right this and like I say there's other ways to do it as well uh, this is just uh, just another quick way to do it signal generator two multimeters pretty quick way to do it and like I say if you have a capacitor and a resistor you can do the same thing with the capacitor the formula is just different. It's one, you know, X of C is uh, 1 over 2 pi FC instead of X of L is equal 2 pi FL. So, all right. So, hey, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.